PTFS custom liveries. They may look great, but now disclaimer, big, big disclaimer text. You cannot put these liveries into the game. So now let's start with the tutorial itself. Now firstly, you want to spawn in your plane of choice. So for me today, I'm going to do the Malaysia Airlines A350. So I'll pick the 350 here. Now once you do, just get the plane up in the air. Maybe around 4000 feet or something. Okay, so this is good enough. Just press F to enter cruise mode. Which, just a quick reminder, you will have to not be in last speed. Okay, as you can see there. Uh, jump out of your pilot seat. And then, if you have to if you have free cam, just take a picture of the plane. Uh, preferably, you'll you want to take a side picture of the plane like this, because then it will be easier later on, as you'll see. Okay then. But if you do not have free cam, well, another thing you can do is just go to the middle of the plane, around this, around this area, and then just use the little FOV slider thing here, and that works as well. Just take a picture here. Alright, so now we've got our picture for the plane, let's move on to the actual editing bit and stuff, alright? So what you want to do is open up your Google Chrome or Edge or something, and then type in Photopea into the browser stuff, to the tab. Um, it's basically a free Photoshop, but now just place your image in this thing, drag it, and then it will automatically open it. Now if you want to be able to zoom with the scroll wheel like I do right now, just go to Edit, Preferences, and then take this box here, zoom with scroll wheel. Alright, now we've got our images. Uh, I will put on screen right now the basic photo P controls. But what you want to do is uh, make sure your image is selected here. And then press Ctrl Alt T. And it will select the image into transform mode. And then just hold Alt, Alt on the keyboard. And choose any of these axes here. And then drag it up. And it will scale the image here as you can see. And just scale it to cover up the Roblox logo up there. And also center it slightly. Yup, until it looks good. And now it's time to begin editing this for real dude. So open up a new tab, search your reference image for the plane you're trying to do. So for example, if I'm doing the Malaysian A350, I'll find a reference picture of the Malaysian Airbus, Airbus A350. So let's just do that now. And just find a good picture like this one here and then you can just copy it so if you copy it and then go back to photo P press ctrl V and will paste the image in so if your image is like mine and there's a lot of blank spaces up here what you want to do is press M on your keyboard it will select this thing up here make sure it's on rectangle select if it's not right click and select it and then just make a box on the layer here on the image and then release after it's selected press delete and it will get rid of that blank space here so it will be more optimized so just so just do the same for the bottom one as well and there we go we've got a nice cutout of our reference plane now press V to move into move tool here you don't always have to press ctrl alt T you can also just press V on your keyboard to quickly move the image. Now it's time to get our next references. Airline logos, flags, and other symbols or something. So let's just get those now. Now for the airline logos, my favorite way of doing it is just to go to Wikipedia here. And then type in your airline here. For, and then type in your airline in the bar. And then the airline logo should be here, right on the side of your thing. And then just click it, right click it, copy image. And there we go, paste it again. Now if you're lucky, it may have no background. If you're not so lucky, and it has a white background or something, just press this, magic one here. Just make sure your layer is selected, and then just click on the blank spaces. And then after it's selected, just press delete on the keyboard, and it will get rid of them one by one. Same. You also have to do the same for the holes in the lenses here, like this one. Just imagine there's a blank space there, and then you click it, and it will delete. But this time it doesn't work because there's nothing there. What you want to do now is split up the logos. So what do I mean by split up? Well, in an airline logo, there's, there's usually two things. 
the symbol or the logo like for this so for example this one here's the bow or wow as they call it and then here's the text the malaysia airlines text want to split up these two because the logo is obviously going to be at the back of the plane and the text is going to be at the front of the plane so how we do this is you right click on this thing here below the rectangle select it's called lasso select here right click it and select polygonal lasso select so if you so once you've done that make sure the layer is selected as always and then just make a shape around the logo of the airline like this and just connect the two dots the beginning and the end press ctrl j and yeah now the logo is separate as you can see here so just put logo away so maybe rename it double click maybe call it the logo or something now go back to the previous layer and we will remove the logo again so just do the same again cut out around the logo connect it delete okay so now you have two layers the text and the logo if you look at the reference picture the text Malaysia and Airlines are directly right next to each other and they're both the same size but if you look at the logo we've got here the airlines text is slightly smaller and also below and it's also below the Malaysia text so to fix it we'll grab the polygonal lasso again and then just cut out around the text that says airlines and then control J and then move it up here and then control C to scale it up make sure it's the same size by the way, it's probably a good time for me to explain the, the transform controls. So if you just drag one of the corners up here, it will just scale it up normally. But if you add an alt, you hold alt while also scaling it up or down, it will scale. It will anchor the scale to the center. If uh, yeah, it's like this. And if you hold shift, it will drag the image. It will stretch it the way that you pull it. So like this. And finally, if you hold control, it will skew the image like this. It kind of make a 3D effect of some sort, which is a little bit weird and goofy, but yeah, if you need it, it's always there. The text Malaysia and Airlines, um, they're disconnected. We want them to be one continuous text so that I can move both of them at the exact same time. Uh, how do we do this? Well, you press, you press V on your keyboard first, and then press Shift. Select both the text. There you go, it will select them both. And then right click on the layers tab here. Click merge layers. And now it's one continuous layer. Now we've got the basics done, the reference image and also the logos. It's now time to get into the more uh, complex. Now it's time to get the secondary references. So what I mean by secondary references is like the flag for example, the flag and the one word logo here which you can barely see but it's still there using the method that I showed you so after you get the additional logos just place them here maybe, you have, maybe you'll have to scale, scale it way down but hey people probably won't even realize it so who cares <laughs> so we'll have to place the flag a little bit uh, in front of the text so we'll move the text behind all right so here comes another problem as you can see in the image the flag is a little bit kind of slanted to the right so how do we slant this flag here for our recreation well just hold control and hold the top of the edge here and drag it to the right as you can see the flag is a little bit slanted to the right now so that's great yeah there we go it's basically uh, accurate I guess Okay, I think that's good enough. Oh, hold on, we've got to place the logo. Wow, how did I miss that for so long? <laughs> uh, anyways, let's scale it down. If you'd like to flip the logo, just right click on it and press flip horizontally. Now, there's another problem again. You can see the logo doesn't match up. Like, it's a little bit weird here. So again, what you gotta do is slant it to the right. So you hold control, drag the top and Yep, it's basically the same now. Now one final thing before the pattern is that you can see here the tail is a little bit dark. So just fix it, um, select the color white down here, press it, 
and then color picker select white and then make sure you select the background layer aka the original image layer and then click and then click G on your keyboard it will select this right click it select paint bucket tool and just click on the tail now you should color it in but sometimes it doesn't work now in cases where it doesn't work or it messes up like this this little bit of line here well you can do is just select the polygonal tool and make a shape make a, a cutout shape of detail so like this okay and after that just fill the bucket in help fill the tail in make sure to click it a couple of times to make sure it gets the edges the edges and yeah it, it fills in much better but you can see it's a little bit too white like not the same with the color of the fuse lush so to fix it just select a different color so press on the color picker again and this time make move your mouse to the fuse lush and then just click on a random spot and it will get the color of the fuse lush here so it should be a lot a little bit more similar now as you can see it's kind of like a cream color yeah the shading is really messed up here well to fix it <laughs> again there's too many problems here so press b on your keyboard this will bring up the brush tool decrease the size a little bit maybe around 5 10 and then just color it just color it in time to do the hardest part of making a ptfs livery and that is the, sh the patterns and shapes first thing first is to get the colors so preferably if your pattern on the livery matches with the airline's color on the logos like you can see malaysian red and blue well you can just take the colors straight from the logo like this click it okay do another one there we go but let's say that the patterns are not the same colors as the logo as the logos so in that case, just go to the reference image and click on any spot in the pattern colors, in the pattern's color. So like this here. So you can see, we get a few different shades of blue but mostly it's around the same color. So just do that if the pattern's colors are not the same as the airline logos. But if they're the same, just take them from the logo. It'll be a little bit more authentic. Authentic. Uh, get your polygonal tool by pressing L. Make sure you select you have selected the original image layer or the background layer and then yeah just follow the shape as best as you can that's basically the only way that you can do this so my preferred way is just to follow the patterns as best as you can and remember a little bit of imperfections here and there is what makes something good you know just take my words for granted please all right so yeah with that out of the way Let's begin creating the patterns and I'll speed this up so if you'd like to follow along just pause the video or maybe slow it down So already I've messed up <laughs> uh, The blue pattern doesn't go all the way to the horizontal stabilizer Well if you messed up Press escape and yeah it will delete all your progress So that's great Alright let's try this again but a little bit more careful this time Alright, there we go, we've got a rough shape now. So again, press G on your keyboard. So just click inside of the cutout that you've made and it will fill in with color. Now it may look a little bit crisp like here uh, for the first time, but if you just click again, it will hopefully fill it in. Uh, it doesn't do a very good job though. So if it starts to not fill in little gaps like this, well, you can try to fix it by deselecting press so firstly deselect the lines and try to fix it by going to the brush tool and then just brushing on the little gaps and dots that you see here photo p photo p is a perfect as you can see but hey at least it's free the blue pattern is done now it's time to do the red stripes here okay let's do this follow as always follow it to the best of your abilities Okay, yeah, you've got a cutout now, fill it in with red as usual. Okay, yeah, let's do that another two times as always. Okay, fill in the final pattern. And yep, 
our livery basically is done so I move the picture out of the way uh, hold on there's one more thing one more thing we forgot no actually a few more things we forget so those are the moon and star there the registration and the winglet logos okay let's just quickly do those now starting with the easiest which is the winglet logos just select the logo layer and and control c control v then move it out of the way place it on the winglet yeah you're basically done now again the winglets are probably a bit too dark so you can just use the same method that you used on the tail which was to lighten it up a bit okay Okay, time for the final thing, which is the moon and star here. Now the registration is optional, but if you'd like to add it to enhance realism or something. Yep, <laughs> get the colors again. So this time the colors are not in the logo, so we'll get them from the picture itself. There we go. Now make sure you're on the background layer again. And press polygonal less and click polygonal lasso. lasso. And just follow the shape to the best of your abilities as usual. Okay, this time, I'm, okay, you know what? I'm not actually going to do it on the original image layer. I'll do it on a separate layer because this moon and star pattern is a little bit tricky. It's a little bit tricky to do. Uh, if I mess this up on the pattern, well, it's going to be a bit troublesome. So, yeah, better safe. Okay, you know what? That moon looks horrible. <laughs> Okay, good. Now, if you'd like to enhance realism again, you can tone down your opacity and then select polygonal ISO and select and then just cut out the parts where the pattern where the pattern is covering the windows. Maybe yeah, just a little bit more realistic. You know what I mean. Alright, there we go, that's fine enough. Bring the opacity back up to 100%. Ah, look at that. Our livery is done. Delete the reference image. And there we go. So, once you're done, you're happy with your livery and you'd like to export it. Well, first, save as PSD. This is so that you can pro This is so that you can edit again later if you'd like to make some changes. Changes. So, I'll just name this Malaysia 350. And then we can export the actual image. So export as PNG here. Okay, quality 100% as usual. Here we go. And save. And here is our My Delivery. Now mine is probably not as good. And if anyone is knowledgeable at creating custom liveries, maybe you can share your tips down below to help out other people as well. And also me too, because <laughs> to be honest, this livery doesn't look that good. Um, anyways, thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Check out the playlist on the screen now for the for my custom liveries that I made. Yeah. Anyways, I'll see you in another video.